indicates the object's in a phase-out orbit. It's on a trajectory and converging on our course. Emergency quarters, emergency quarters. All personnel report to emergency stations immediately. Emergency quarters, emergency quarters. All personnel report to emergency stations immediately. Generator's ready, sir. Another one of those communication satellites, Captain, a 1960-70 type. It's closing fast, sir. Range 500, and directly in our orbit pattern. Activate horizontal number three, 25 degrees. Stand by vertical control jets. Standing by. Activate vertical control, four-second thrust. Horizontal tilt. Lieutenant Ingstrom, contact Esau Earth Base and tell them that another of those 30 year old derelicts has shown up. It's a step on hazard. And give them my new orbital pattern. Yes, sir. Well, I don't ever understand why there's so much junk up here in those early space years. Secure from quarters, Major. Secure from emergency quarters. All personnel secure from quarters. These ice caves opens up an entirely new area of thought. With water, we can produce our own construction materials right on the site. The savings in transporting raw materials will be tremendous. Yes, if we can convert that ice to water. It may not be that simple. Captain Stevens, have we heard from Lunar Base yet? Not yet, sir. We're still trying. We should be able to incorporate the solar power reflectors. The heat they can produce will certainly melt ice. Yes, I know. I wasn't thinking of that. It's a human element that concerns me. Tell me, when will we know about those soil samples from the Mare Imbrium area? In about a week. The geologists are studying every possibility. So far, no sign of ore deposit. General Noland, communications is receiving from probe ship number five at the lunar excavation. Major Towers is standing by. Right on schedule. Now we'll find something about those ice caves. All right, Captain, put him on my confidential channel. Towers, this is Nolan. Are you reading me? I read you, General. How's the weather down there? It's beautiful. What did you find in those ice caves? Did you get me any samples? I've got a chunk of everything I can see. I'm even bringing you a cake of moon ice. Good work, Major. Stand by. Program you and return flight plan R-350. You'll have a layover on the space station. The transport ship isn't scheduled to leave Earth until next week. You won't mind that uh, slight delay, will you, Towers? Mind, General? I planned it that way. All right. Have a good trip, and don't lose those samples. Over. See you next week, General. Over and out. Colonel? I'd give ten years of my life to be out there with those boys. It's your own fault. You set the age limit. <laughs> I know, but I'd still like to be out there.
Switch automatic pilot. Flight plan R350. Flight plan R350. Check. Automatic pilot on. Cabin pressure. Okay. Oxygen and ventilation. Okay. Fuel consumption normal. Radio and radar on. Well, we're on our way home, Don, without a hitch. I told you there was nothing to it. Just sit back and let the electronic skipper sail you safely through the hazardous seas of star-studded space. Sure. Sure, nothing to it. You'll get used to it. The first trip out is the only rough one. After that, it's like cruising down a freeway in a wrong lane, blindfolded. <laughs> Tell me something, Major. What did you mean when you told General Nolan that you planned it that way? The layover on the space station, I mean. What's so special about it? It's not what, Weber. It's who. Who? Okay, who? You've heard of heavenly bodies, haven't you? Well, kid, in about eight hours, you're going to see a real live living one. You'll probably put in for an immediate transfer for a tour of duty on the space station. But don't. You'll be too late. In one more month, you'll be transferred back to Earth and into the arms of her Prince Charming. And happiness ever after. You don't mean Lieutenant Ingstrom, that great big beautiful blonde with a binary brain. That's right. I do not mean Lieutenant Connie Ingstrom. I mean Faith Montaigne. The civilian biochemist? I didn't know she was out here. Is she supposed to really be something? Uh, you can take my word for it. It's no supposition. It's a fact. <laughs> X7. Prober 5 to Space Station X7. Are you receiving? Come in, SS X7. Hello, Prober Ship 5. We read you clear and clean. Standing by to receive your transmit. Over. Prober 5, Major Towers, Captain Weber. Preceding Space Station X7. On flight plan R350. ETA 1330. We carry coal cargo. En route, Earth Base. West Coast. Do you read me? Over. Your message received, Major Towers. Proceed according to your plan of operation. Over. Uh, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. Just an itch. Maybe we can get a bath on that space station. <laughs> Central American Canal. Well, Probe 5 is doing at 1330 with Major Towers and Captain Weber. I've already confirmed their approach plan. Cold cargo. Geological specimens from the Lunar 2 area. <laughs> well, we won't have any radiation to worry about. That's a relief. But you better run a routine analysis anyway, Doctor. Yes, I'll go right down to the laboratory and alert Miss Montaigne. She'll want to have the molecular scope ready. And she'll be on cloud 99 when she hears her flash Gordon's on his way. Thank you. I suggest you call it a day. You look a bit weary. I feel fine. You must get more rest. 
Now look, I'm only the doctor. I will only remain a few more minutes. But please don't ride me. I've had enough experience in space to know when I've had it. Well, I haven't. Not yet. Don't you think it's about time he got his feet back on some solid ground? Uh, what do you mean, Connie? You know what I mean. If ever I saw a man headed for the deeps, it's him. And I don't want to see it. What can I do? Look, with the rest of you, I can demand. But he is the captain. Now, I've tried to do everything I can do, but he's a pretty stubborn man. I've done everything I can do. Well, you might try a question he'd be transferred. After all, he wouldn't have to know. I'm in charge of communications. And by some strange coincidence, you just happen to be a bit in the deeps yourself. About him. No? Me fall for the skipper? I wouldn't take that kind of treatment from a man I wanted unless... unless he asked me to. these remote parts of the outer world. This is an enchanted forest. And legend has it that a lovely nymph lives herein. Tis true, tis true. But alas, tonight you are too late. One has already won the fair maiden fan. Naturally. But only because I'm a true scientist and not some adventurous hot rocketeer. <laughs> oh, uh, probe ship five's coming in from the moon with some new geological samples. The captain wants a thorough check run on them. Oh, what's the nature of the material? Do we know? Not active and stable, I imagine. Uh, these are specimens from a new, uh, new excavation near the new lunar base there. The ice caves. The ice caves? Well, then Gordon will be on Proba 5. Oh, yes, yes. Um, I forgot to mention that. Uh, yes, Major Tires will be along, too. You, why didn't you say so in the first place? Some friend you are. How much time have I got? About six hours. Oh, golly, what a mess. I'm gonna... I'd better hurry. Gordon wouldn't know me if he saw me like this. I have a feeling it wouldn't make much difference. True love have no eyes. So they say. And they say it's sometimes a blind old dreamer. Anyway, I'd rather not take any chances. Especially with Miss out of this world around. <laughs> Station Control. Stand by for landing and 
instructions. Do you read me? Over. Prober 5 to station control. We're standing by. Over. You are now in the magnetic field. On signal switch controls automagnetic. Our gravitation beam will convey you onto the landing platform. Over. Prober 5. We'll go, we'll go. Standing by. Hello, station control. We are now in automagnetic and locked on your graviton beam. Over and out. Okay, Don. Suit up. cigarettes. Bad for the health, you know. Yes, but so is drinking. People still do it. Makes you genie eyes are gonna ban kissing. My hope not. All right. Gas off. Steam off. Air condition. Gas off. Steam off. Air conditioning. On, sir. You all right in there, Towers? Clean as a newborn astro baby. Open me in the door. Yes, sir. Sergeant Andrews, stand by to remove cargo capsule to the laboratorium. Yes, sir. Major Showers, good to see you. Again. Good to be here. Captain Weber, welcome aboard. What, are you looking for something? Uh, someone. She hasn't been transferred already. Oh, oh, no, no. She's probably in her room preparing her surprise entrance. Quarters ready for these men, Olson? Yes, sir. And a hot meal. Oh, well, that sounds good. We've been on synthetics for a week. Hey, one half gravity. This feels good. Hello, Dr. Hoffman. Welcome. Connie? Well, well, if it isn't the outer limits. But it's off limits to you, Captain. Sorry, quickly. Chief Sickles. Doctor, get into the infirmary at once and give him a complete checkup. And you better have one, two towers. I can't afford to have two sick astronauts on my hands. <laughs> we'll talk later, Major. I'll be in my cabin. Yes, sir. That's a tough break. His first assignment? Yes. And a good kid, too. This will ground them for sure. General Nolan's cracking the whip on physical fitness. How about holding up the report? For a while, anyway. Maybe it's only a sick stomach. I believe we can do that. Did you show the captain to his quarters? I have the duty. Yes, sir. <laughs> Life on the space station. 
she must agree with you. Well, you know why I'm out here again. Making any progress? With Cromwell. It's like trying to reach escape velocity. A World War III jet. Well, don't give up. He's worth it. Well, he won't be. He stays out here much longer. His tour of duty was up two months ago. But you know how he gets his way with Nolan. Where I made my mistake was in not going after a pushover. Like you, Major. Sure, Lieutenant, honey. And that's the smartest mistake you ever made. Oh, uh, very best, sweet. Thank you, ma'am. Now, if you need anything, just flash your rank. I'll, uh, I'll do that. You uh, grow them yourself. And oh, oh, well, I, uh, I uh, brought you a present, some uh, video records, uh, latest hit tunes. Later. No, no, no. Yes, now. Doctor Montaigne, please report to the infirmary. Faith Montaigne, please report to Doctor Hoffman in the infirmary. Acknowledge, please. All right, Lieutenant, right away. Dear Connie. Well, she's all right. You just have to get to know her. I'd rather you didn't. Uh, later? Uh, later. To my knowledge, Colonel, pressure changes have never brought on symptoms like this. And I, I believe we can rule out space raptures, too. Too much weightlessness produces hallucinations, but no, no high temperatures. This man's on fire. I know I've seen the raptures before. Synthetic food poisoning, maybe? No, it isn't that. Faith's run a test on that. She's checking his blood right now. Very frankly, at the moment, I don't know what's wrong with this boy. It's something new to me. It's always this way. Just when we think we have space under control, some new barrier looms up. There are things out there we may never understand. Or live with. Uh, have you uh, found anything, Faith? I'll uh, show you in a minute, Doctor. Frank, uh, why don't you try to get some rest? I'll let you know anything we find out. We'll do our very best. Please stop worrying about me, Doctor. never gets any rest. I do worry about him. Doctor, look at this. It's the sample from the whelp on Captain Weber's leg. I've never seen anything like it before. It resembles a common bacteria, but... It's grown. Why, it's almost twice as large as it was a few minutes ago. Are you certain? I'm positive. I could barely see it before. That's why I didn't mention it. <laughs> What is it, Doctor? That whelp on Weber's leg. It may not be as simple blister as I thought. Let's take another look. It's grown at an amazing rate. Wait, don't touch it. What is it, Faith? That looks like some kind of a fungus. If it is, we all may be in a lot of trouble. His pain's increasing. What kind of trouble, Faith? I'm not as well-versed in fungi as you are. Well, some types of fungi are capable of killing living animal cells if they get into the bloodstream. And the microbe in his blood sample could be that kind of fungus. Mm. And if it is, Captain Weber is dying. And there's nothing we can do about it at this stage. Look, we got to think and act fast. Now, we've got to isolate Weber before the spores have a chance to spread. The compression chamber can be sealed. Yes. Faith. Where are you going? 
the lab to analyze those moon samples. If that is a fungus, it must have come from the ice caves. Dr. Hoffman, Gordon's been with Captain Weber all the time. Give him a thorough examination. Yes, of course. I'll call him right away. Thanks. Oh, and Faith, I don't think we should say anything to anybody about this until we're more certain. Not even to Colonel Cromwell. You're right. Something wrong? No. You see Dr. Hoffman? Mm-hmm. He says I'm the perfect man. Did he say anything else about uh, Captain Weber, I mean? Not only that he was very sick with a high fever. Some kind of virus. I don't think it's too serious. What's wrong, Faith? Something's troubling you. No. No, just, uh, just tired, I guess. Well... Tell you the truth, I was worried about you. I was afraid you might have caught that virus, too. Now, the real truth is the station duty is getting you down. I'm taking you back with me on the transport. My assignment isn't finished till next month. Well, to heck with that. I'll just ask General Nolan to assign you to me. Oh, that I want to see. Now, uh, you underestimate the amazing powers of Major Towers. Now, if the General doesn't say yes, I'll just, uh, well, show up without his precious moon samples. It's, uh, all a question of... Having faith. Attention, all personnel. Attention, all personnel. Report to your emergency stations. There is a conspiracy aboard this station. It never fails. Every week we have an emergency drill. Always when I'm right in the middle of something important. Well, that's uh, Colonel Cromwell for you. If a man is to survive out there in those uncharted seas of space, he must be prepared to cope with any sudden emergency. The unpredictable. The unknown dangers of space. Mm -hmm. And you know something? He's right. Let's go. Laboratory and area clear of personnel, Captain. Seal off the lab. Recreation and crew quarters clear of personnel. Seal off out of an area C and area D. Radar blip at same bearing, Captain. Coming in at 272. Range 8000 miles. Closing, sir. This is Dr. Hoffman. I'm remaining in the infirmary with a patient. Very well, Dr. Hoffman. See off area A. Area B will remain open. Yes, sir. It's closing fast, Captain. 10 miles per second. Meteor shower? Looks like more than a shower. Trajectory angle? One, two, two degrees high. Bearing in now 275. Range now 6500 zero, zero miles. Lieutenant, tune in for our electric delineator. In our course relation, plot. Yes, sir. Medias, Gordon? Yes, coming this way and fast. Think that is? No, it isn't likely. We're only a tidy speck, and there's a lot of space out there. Bearing is now 278. Range 5200 zero, zero miles. Our metric report coming in now, Captain. What is it, Captain? Lieutenant. What is it, Lieutenant? Our course relation pattern is converged to zero. Plus or minus 500 miles. Collision course, Captain. Collision course. Captain, we're on a collision course with the meteors. Plus or minus 500 miles. Thank you, Connie. What's the time factor? What's the range now, Sergeant? Four, five, zero, zero. Seven and a half minutes. All right, stand by for evasive maneuvers. Yes, sir. Ready all generators. Now, let's take a look at that enemy of ours. There it is. It'll be a near miss. Range now. Six, two, zero, zero miles. 
trajectory course, plus 500, clearing, Captain. It will be a near miss. Station horizontal attitude. The lab. No pressures drop below normal, sir. It's holding steady. The hole in your wall is resealed. That's not too serious. After we secure station, send the crew out to repair the outer wall. Yes, sir. You'll have to hold up your work a few hours. Secure personnel from emergency quarters. Lieutenant, relay a full report recording to Esau bases both east and west. Yes, sir. Colonel Cromwell, this is Hoffman. Could you and Miss Montaigne come to the infirmary at once, please? It's Captain Weber. Yes, Doctor, right away. And for this, we volunteered? You forget, Connie. Only the best can qualify or not. What's going on in the infirmary? Faith turned white just now. I don't know. But I'm going to find out. the entire space station with fungicide. All personnel must report for examination. Anyone who's come into contact with this thing could... Good one, Dr. Hoffman. What's wrong with Weber? Captain Weber is dead. Dead? It was more than a virus fever, Major. Your friend Weber was infected with some unknown kind of fungus. It's literally eaten him up. But a fungus. Where? The moon caves. That's why you were searching the samples so carefully. I haven't finished yet. The meteor interrupted me. You should have told me. We had to be sure first. Could have been something else. Well, now we know. All of our lives are in jeopardy. Dr. Hoffman, do you realize a thing like this could put us in quarantine? Now, where is Weber? I want to see him. I'd rather you didn't, Frank. He's a pretty terrible sight. I'd like to see for myself. All right, Captain. If you insist. Transports for supplies. Frank, we've got supplies enough on this ship to last for three months, longer if necessary. And Faith can always manufacture more food in the lab. Unless the supplies become contaminated. That's why we must sterilize the station immediately. No. We'll do as I say. Captain Weber died from pressure shock. And that's what will be reported to General Nolan. But Captain... Major Towers! If any other person aboard this station is told anything differently, I'll hold you responsible. Now, is that clear? Yes, sir. Must realize what could happen if that fungus gets to Earth and starts spreading. He's become a very sick man, Major. Too many months out here without relief. You know the effects of prolonged weightlessness? Even half gravity isn't enough after a while. He's on the brink of space raptures. He should be grounded. 
I think that's what he's afraid of. He knows this is his last command in space. There's only one thing to do. It may be a dangerous move. It's very dangerous. But you can count on me to help. changes while entering parallel orbit with this space station. This is terrible news. Captain Weber was in excellent condition. I don't understand how this could happen. And I regret to inform you that Major Tower's attitude since arriving this station is not in best interest of my command nor the U.S. Space Agency. Colonel Frank Cromwell, Commanding Officer, Space Station X-7, March 25th, 1990. And the tarnation is going on out there. You know Major Towers, don't you? I'm afraid I do, sir. Well, this doesn't sound like him to me. Frankly, General, this entire report strikes me as very unusual. Evans, have you contacted Colonel Howard yet? Yes, sir. He's already left for the rocket test area. You are expected there at 1630, General. Uh, yes, I know. All right, Captain. Contact personnel. Have them make out a report on Weber. I tell him to hold up the telegram to his home. I'll take care of that myself. Yes, sir. Major Evans, have my copter stand by. I'll be leaving in 10 minutes. And uh, inform the pilot I'll be making one stop on the way to the test area. Yes, sir. All right. I see that questioning look. What's in your mind? I thought it might be better if I went with you to Captain Weber's home. This is going to hit Kitty awfully hard. They've just got married, you know. You're right. Meet me at the heliport right away. Yes, sir. General Nolan, sir. And what does it say? He'd like to know what the... He'd like to know if you could clarify your last report. He'd like to have a few more facts, especially in regards to Major Tower's attitude. A billion star system in that great nebula, Connie. And the probability that at least one percent of them resembles our own. Do you really believe there are other living beings out there like ourselves? I'm certain of it. And much closer than in Messier 8. The probability law states the conditions for life as we know it should exist on at least 100,000 planets here in our own galaxy. And you can't wait to get out there and find them, can you? It's a great distance from here to the nearest neighboring star, Connie. Proxima Centauri is more than four light years away. Well, that's only six trillion miles as a crow flies. At the speed of light, that is. We'll never make it in my lifetime. No, this is the end of it. This is your captain. 
Correct the horizontal attitude at once. Do you read me? Do you wish to reply to the general's request now? No. Not right now, Captain. Has your been fully restored down in the lab, Sergeant? Yes, sir, and it's holding. And, Major, that uh, chunk of meteor made a hole about the size of a golf ball. The impact might have shaken things up a little down there. We'll soon find out. Lieutenant, just a minute, please. I'll be down shortly. What did the captain say in that report to Nolan? It was coded, I don't know. I wouldn't tell you anyway, you know that. What's he been telling you, Connie? Why the cold front? Cold? Like he says, you've been imagining things. Listen, you know as well as I do that Cromwell is a sick man. I need your help before Major something... Major Towers, Colonel Cromwell is in command of the station. I'll not be a part of any conspiracy against him. Is that all, sir? Yes, for the moment. The centrifuge broke loose, jammed against the main switch. Let there be light, and there. What a mess. What well, could be worse? Yeah, I guess so. the damages in this area. The impact of the meteor knocked the centrifuge loose. Uh, the inner wall cracked, but it resealed itself nicely. Hmm. Faith, how long will it take you to complete your analysis? Oh, about an hour or two. I'll have to start all over again. Some of the samples have become mixed. Yeah. Well, work as fast as you can. I don't want to send in a report to Nolan until I have all the facts. Oh, uh, Dr. Hoffman, I'd like to look at Colonel Cromwell's medical record. It's in the infirmary. Mm -hmm. Faith, let me know immediately if you find any trace of the fungus. Be careful, Faith. Hello, Faith, this is Gordon. 
Are you there? Answer me. Answer me, Faith. Have you found any sign of the fungus? She's in trouble. said he'd be down shortly. Shortly? Sergeant, what time is the next supply ship due to arrive here? Sometime tomorrow, Major. Contact General Nolan at once. Get him on the continent of town. Sir, I'm not permitted to transmit without proper authority, unless it's an emergency. Well, this is an emergency. Get General Nolan at once. Since when are you giving orders aboard the station, Major? Oh, sir. There's a monstrous thing aboard this station. We may all be contaminated. What kind of a monstrous thing? A fungus from the moon. That's what killed Weber. We've got to stop all ships from coming here. Now, Towers, why don't you and I go out to the recreation room and watch a movie, huh? You need to relax. You fool, I'm telling you, we don't have much time. We, we've got to inform General Nolan. We'll need his help. Sure, sure. Now, come on. Towers. This man is suffering from hallucinations. He could become dangerous. But Colonel, I'm to his quarters and lock him in. Sergeant Anders, give him a hand. I'll take him you through. You see it? He's out of his mind. Can't you see that? Hey, Hoffman. This man is ill. Space Raptors, you know what to do. There's nothing wrong with him, and you know it. Frank, you're the one who's ill. We must relieve you of your command, sir. Never. This is insubordination, Major. Call it what you like. Mutiny, Major. Major Olson, I want all three of them locked up in the infirmary at once. Sergeant Sloan. Let him go. Gordon, please let him go. There's been enough trouble already. Take a look. Oh, wait. 
I want to send a report to General Nolan. A full report of this whole mutinous action. Tell the general I want their transport ship launched at once. With replacements for Dr. Hoffman, Faith Montaigne, and the military police from Major Towers. Tell him everything, Connie. How Major Towers tried to take over my command. How he held us at gunpoint until Major Olsen overpowered him. Gunpoint, Captain. Well, yes. You saw it. You were watching the whole thing, weren't you, Connie? It was mutiny. I'll give a full report to General Noland. You can trust me, sir. Good. Good. That's what I like. Loyalty and respect for my crew. himself was the victim of the rapturous space. Imagining the gun is proof enough. What is your plan, General? I've issued orders to Major Olsen to release Towers and the rest and to try to subdue Combo. Should I alert the transport crew? No, wait. Why don't you listen to this? Major Towers was talking about some kind of fungus that killed Captain Weber. He wanted a message sent to you, General, to stop all ships from coming to the station. I await your orders, General. Lieutenant Engstrom, SSX-7, over. A fungus? What does she mean? I don't know. And until I do, I want all craft to stay away from Space Station X-7. Captain Stevens, come in, please. Right away, sir. We'll put that order into effect immediately, General. Any news from Space Station X-7? No, sir, not a word. We're trying to make contact with them. Something's wrong with their equipment. Lieutenant Engstrom did receive my orders, you're sure? She acknowledged, General, and she said she'd put Major Towers on as soon as possible. That was over two hours ago. They must be in real trouble out there. You saw communications calling Space Station X-7. U.S. Space Agency West to SSX-7. Do you receive me? You're off duty till midnight, Sergeant Engstrom. I know, Captain, but I'd rather be here. We've lost all contact with them. Nothing since 1720. Well, please, Captain. I'm concerned about Connie. She seems so scared on that, on that last transmit. I want to be here if we get through to them. All right, Sergeant. We'll try to get some rest. And remember, both of you, we're both on security. Double A. So keep your lips buttoned. Good night. Thank you. this station, sir. Inside, outside, and, and even in between.
someone who doesn't know what he's doing, Colonel Shaw picked the right set of trans cycles to smash. That'll be enough of that, Sergeant. I'm sorry, but I didn't mean... I think the Colonel's a great skipper. Sure hope they get him without a fight. They're trying. Find Major Olson. Tell him to meet me in the control room. Yes, sir. Let's hope for the best, Andrews. It'll work, I promise you. Can fix his equipment with my eyes closed. Colonel Cromwell made that a requirement. Well, bless him for that. There, what did I tell you? Any luck, honey? Yes, I think so, thanks to Andrews and the Colonel's requirements. What is it? What did you find? You better check out the ventilation tubes. I think the Colonel is hiding out in them. Could be, but it won't be easy. Sloan, correct the horizontal tilt. Now, let's keep the trim station at all times. Okay, Major, we're ready to give it a try. Space Station X-7, Dr. Hoffman. My, my shoulder. The pain. Faith. I hope there's in the fungus. Doctor, no. We, we better get me to the infirmary as soon as possible. I don't want to alarm the other. General, this is Major Towers. We haven't a moment to lose. First, do not send supply or any other ship to this station. I repeat, do not program any other flights to this station at this time. Second, we have a very dangerous alien growth aboard. I'm sure it is from the lunar ice caves. According to Dr. Hoffman and Faith Montaigne, it is a type of fungi that, that grows at a tremendous rate under certain conditions. It can be deadly. It destroys living cells, plant or animal, on contact. Are you receiving me, General? Over. I'm receiving you very well, Major Towers. I understand your message and will comply. I must inform you this means you're quarantined. Do you understand? Over. Yes, General, I... We understand. Over. Stand by, Major. General, I must speak with Dr. Hoffman at once. We can begin a study of this fungus growth here in the laboratory. But I must have more facts. You're right, Doctor. Major, put on Dr. Hoffman. We've got to have more facts about this fungus growth. We can begin study here immediately. Over. Something's wrong. Are you receiving me, Major Towers? Over. Tell the General I'll contact him later. This is SSX-7 Communications. We will contact you shortly with more information as you request. But we'll have to clear the channel for now. There's much to be done. Over and out. Colonel Howard, contact West Coast space bases immediately. Cancel all flights, experimental or otherwise. Captain, get the chiefs of staff on my private line. Yes, sir. General, contact Strategic Command Headquarters. They should go on alert. Strategic Defense Command, sir? But General Nolan, there's no threat How do you know that? Suppose that space station gets out of control. Suppose it plunges toward Earth, carrying that deadly fungus with it. Well, it should burn up when it hits the atmosphere. Yes, it should, but suppose one tiny fragment didn't. That might be enough to start this thing off, spreading it all around the world. Gentlemen, we must be ready to annihilate Space Station X-7, if necessary. Turn them off. No, 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 it isn't that. 
It isn't the light it thrives on. It's the heat. We, we put Weber in the decompression chamber, remember? There was no light in there. Only the heat. But the fungus continued to grow. Oh, what should we do? You have a plan? An experiment. But it might be the answer. You've got to put me into the refrigeration chamber. Lower my body temperature to maximum. I don't believe this microorganism can live at freezing temperature. He may be right. The thing came from the frozen wall of the lunar ice caves. Until it reached a warm environment, it was dormant. But what if we're wrong? We've got to try. If we fail... Towers! Cromwell's on the rampage again. Now he thinks we're trying to destroy the station. Do what he says, Faith. It may be his only chance for survival. Maybe ours as well. Station. 
We might fall back to Earth. This is SSX-7 calling USSAW, Space Station X-7 calling U.S. Space Agency West Coast. contact with Earth again. I don't know what good it's going to do us, Major. At least we'll be able to tell them we're still alive. Are we, Gordon? We're not really alive anymore, and you know it. We're nothing more than an event about to become history. You're supposed to be asleep. Sleep? Wake? Makes no difference now. Bad dreams I have with my eyes closed, they're still there when I open them. Hey, that's me you're talking about. Your dream boy, remember? It's as if we're in a giant sea show, far into the dark ocean, just drifting quietly. Faith. Snap out of it, Faith. Drifting quietly from nowhere to nowhere. We're going to die in here. We will not. General Nolan will come up with an answer. And if he doesn't, we will. Right, Andrews? That's right, sir. You're forgetting the uh, amazing powers of Major Towers. Now that you know I'm just a crybaby, I guess you won't want me anymore, huh? Shot. He's having pretty bad nightmares. The nightmares won't hurt him. It can't be half as bad as his hallucinations when he's awake. Gordon, there isn't any more food. Those protein wafers we had this morning were the last. Well, that's impossible. You said we had enough synthetics to last another week. I only said that to keep you from worrying. Synthetics are all contaminated. I knew that before we moved up here. Those are just empty cartons. In the water? It's all right, enough for about two weeks. Olsen, are you still with us? Olsen? Are you there, Major? This is Lieutenant Engstrom, your voice from space. At your service, Major. How is everyone down there? Oh, great. Nothing like the life of an astronaut. You just eat and sleep. I wonder what those poor Earth things are doing. She can still make a joke at a time like this. You know, I told you she was all right when you get to know her. Yeah. Connie, how's your food supply holding up? Food. Great. Matter of fact, we're overstocked. 
Why don't you all come down here? We'll have a banquet. That means they're running out. I'll take a rain check. Connie, how's Dr. Hoffman? Well, according to the instruments, his heartbeat's still registering. Very slow. Very sure. You know something, Major? I think he's better off than any of us. Because he doesn't need food. He doesn't know what's happening. And best of all, that horrible fungus. Can't get to him in that box. Stand by a moment, Lieutenant. Sergeant, do we have survivor suits stored up here? Yes, sir. Every compartment on the station has enough suits for all members of the crew. You know how the captain is about the emergency of measures. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Cromwell's preparedness might save our lives right now. Get the suits out. Yes, sir. What is it, Gordon? I'll let you know in a moment. Connie, now listen to me very carefully. In one of the storage compartments in the infirmary, you'll find some survival suits. I want each one of you to put on one. Check the power packs. Make sure the inner lining heaters are working. When this has been done, let me know. Got that? Whatever you say, Major. I'm going to lower the temperature inside the entire space station to zero. Do you follow me, Connie? Yes, sir. Operation Deep Freeze. Now you know. The low temperatures will kill off the fungus, is that it? I'm almost certain of it. Remember what Dr. Hoffman said? Yeah. Yes, he thought that the fungus died because of the heat. Yes, his next experiment on himself has proved that he was right. The fungus hasn't spread on his body. Okay, let's suit up. Major, how are you going to lower the temperature? The master switches are down in the control room. I know that, Andrews. Gordon, you can't go down there. Get into your suits. Towers, I think I have the answer to our communications problem. What did you say, Olsen? Now listen. If we shut down the reactor, they'll know about it down on Earth. The radar tracking stations will read it immediately. What's your idea? Well, I'll show you down in the control room. Now, wait a minute, Olsen. There's no sense in both of us taking a chance. All right, Major. I figure if this deep freeze idea of yours doesn't work, we're dead anyway. Now, in five minutes, I'm going to kill the heat here in the infirmary. When the temperature drops to zero, I'm moving out. See you in the control room, Towers. Do you and Faith remain here, Sergeant? But, sir, that's an order. Yes, sir. Take care of the captain. Hey, none of that. Captain's orders. You're in command now. decision, Howard. It's the decision of the heads of states around the world. If there's any sign of Space Station X-7 falling out of orbit, it'll have to be destroyed. General Noland, we're receiving from International Communications Japan. They are monitoring a signal from SSX-7. We'll be right in, Captain Stevens. They're receiving more code of all ancient things. A tracking station in Australia first picked it up, but the signal was too weak. Japan is much stronger. They're still alive. One of them anyway. Yes, and they're using their head. They probably created a signal by breaking the circuit on the nuclear generator. A simple static signal. That's all those radar telescopes need. With their antennas, a spark gap out there can read like a megabomb down here. Sergeant, are you on automatic translate? Yes, sir. The message is being relayed now. They're all still alive. At least they... And Dr. 
Dr. Hoffman's experiment upon himself proved fungus destroyed by freezing temperature. Interior space station now below zero. Cannot, repeat, cannot destroy fungus outside station. Food supply exhausted. Oxygen supply low. Need your help. Does this mean that the space station can be saved, General? I don't know. I here, see that this gets to all official stations. Yes, sir. Howard. We've got to think of something quick. We haven't much time. The fungus is clinging to the outer surface of the station due to high temperatures generated by the unshielded blazing sun. We need to create a, a screen somehow. That is it, Howard. That is it. A cloud. A cloud, General? A cloud of sub-zero particles like this.
General Nolan. We're receiving you loud and clear. And thank God. Come in, X-7. Over. General, that was a pretty nice trick you pulled off. Space Station X-7 is now as clean as a newborn star. What are the chances of launching a relief ship? You hold on out there, all of you. Countdown is already in progress. Relief ship will reach your station within three hours. Do you understand? Don't lose your faith. Over. Your message received and understood. Over and out.